This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University. Today I want to talk a little bit more about Bitcoin runes. Now Bitcoin runes are a relatively new protocol that allow people to issue tokens on top of Bitcoin. Runes have been marketed by some as a path to generational wealth, but for most people they will probably just be a path to generational poverty. As Tomer points out in this tweet, 13 are down over 90%, 7 are down over 99% after just 24 hours. Now the runes protocol was created by Casey Rodimore, whom we also have to thank for ordinals and inscriptions. I'll put a link to his blog in the description notes below where he talks about ordinal theory. This was the original essay on this very scammy theory. And while you're on this blog, you're gonna discover something very disturbing. Casey is also a writer who appears to be interested in intimate physical relationships between men and dogs. You can't actually make this stuff up. His blog is definitely not safe for work. His blog is one of the most repulsive things I've ever seen. It's not safe for normal human beings who find these things incredibly repulsive. This is the story in question, which I'll link to. I'm not going to talk about here. But these are things he talks about openly on Twitter as well. I'll provide links to all of this just as documentation, but please don't look at it unless you really want to be disturbed. The real mystery is why Casey Dogamore didn't create ordinals and inscriptions and runes for Dogecoin instead, given his love for dogs. But here we are in Bitcoin transaction fees have been skyrocketing thanks to the minting of this spam. We can see here over 100 sats per V-byte. This has been in the hundreds of sats since the halving. If you're enjoying this video so far, I just ask you to hit the subscribe button, give this video a like, leave a comment, question, suggestion for a future video, share this video with a few friends as well. These high transaction fees that we're seeing on Bitcoin now are not the result of Bitcoins having suddenly become the world's new global monetary settlement layer. These high transaction fees are being caused by spam and they're behaving a little bit like a denial of service, a DOS attack on the network, making it prohibitively expensive to do monetary transactions on chain. Yes, this is a preview of how base layer transaction fees will look someday, and this is used as a partial justification by the promoters of this garbage. Base layer transaction fees are going up, but that day is not today. This spam is the direct result of unethical crypto VCs trying to use Bitcoin for their latest scams. And if you see a company or other actor in the Bitcoin space or the crypto space who's promoting ordinals, inscriptions, BRC20 tokens, runes, you should be calling them out, I think. So if Casey Dogamore or the Taproot Wizards are being given a platform at a Bitcoin conference or event, I would consider boycotting it if you don't like these sort of man-dog stories and if you don't like spam on the Bitcoin blockchain. Furthermore, if a company like Casa, for example, Casa Keys is supporting spam, then consider using their competitor for multi-sig, their competitor, Unchained Capital, instead. I called out Casa a couple days ago on Twitter saying Casa remains one of the best ways to hold your ship coins like Ethereum and ordinals and cold storage. Think of it as an ice chest for feces. Trying to be a little bit funny there, but trying to make the point that a Bitcoin-only company should not be supporting this sort of these sort of scams. As a Bitcoin or pleb, let companies know that it is the kiss of death to support these scams. Yes, Bitcoin is an open protocol. Yes, Bitcoin is for enemies. Yes, Bitcoin is for enemies to do monetary transactions. But that doesn't mean that we're not supposed to respond when bad actors try to attack the system. For example, when the Bitcoin mining pool Mara Marathon was mining blocks that imposed U.S. government OFAC censorship, in other words, they were excluding Bitcoin transactions from blocks that the get government, the U.S. government didn't like, and then they were bragging about this online. We didn't just sit back and say, well, Bitcoin is for enemies, let Mara do what they want. Instead, the whole Bitcoin ecosystem called them out and Mara buckled rightly under their pressure. Now, when crypto companies in the space were colluding to try to force through a block increase, the New York Agreement and Segwit 2X in 2016, 2017, node operators didn't just sit back and say, it's okay since Bitcoin is for enemies. Instead, node operators fought back and eventually defeated the big corporations and miners who ended up backpedaling. Node operators called out the big blockers. Node operators called out bad actors like Mara. And I think this is what needs to happen again today when miners produce blocks full of garbage like this. This is a block that's completely full of 
runes stuff we can tell by using the goggles here if you click on opera turn you'll see that these are all opera turn transactions they're all very tiny transactions and as a result if we look at the health of this block just 2.11 percent of the transactions are actually true monetary transactions and not crypto vc scamming and spamming. If you can see here, I'm using a different version of the mempool that was created by Leo Half. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing his name correctly, but what he's done is he's modified the description here to display the percentage of financial transactions. So if you look at health here, this block that's just full of opportune garbage is only 2.11% financial transactions. If we take a look at what he's filtering out, uh, someone asked him what's the definition of a financial transaction used for these metrics. Everything that's not an inscription, a rune uh, with opportun uh, marking or stamps are being filtered out. So definitely I'll put a link to this in the description notes below and it'll give you yet another way of judging the health of blocks and judging whether miners are doing what we node operators want to see them doing. So consider boycotting and calling out Bitcoin mining rigs that include lots of obvious spam in their blocks. Instead, point your mining rigs to Ocean. I'm not being paid or affiliated with them in any way, except as a miner who's pointing his hash uh, at them. So this is how you mine with Ocean. You basically point your ASIC to them, you enter a Bitcoin address for your rewards, and you start earning Bitcoin. Again, this is a non-KYC service, which is really nice. So it's a way of earning non-KYC Bitcoin as well. And when you mine with them, you'll have a choice what sort of block template to use. If you use the data free one, it will include only transactions without arbitrary data, and it will filter out all this garbage. If you're a node operator, also consider running Bitcoin Knots. This is still something I need to get up and running, but this is an alternate version of Bitcoin Core that has better filters for all of this garbage. I want to link again to WTF happened in February 2023. This has more inf information about spam on Bitcoin. Also talks about different ways of installing knots on different types of machines. It looks like the easiest way of doing it is on your home server if you have a Start9 or Umbral or if you're running their operating systems on a Raspberry Pi. The person who's really been leading this charge has been a Bitcoin Mechanic, also known as at Grassfed Bitcoin on Twitter. And there are a number of good interviews he's done. He did an interview late last year with Preston Pish about uh, ocean mining and spam. He also spoke recently on what the What Bitcoin Did uh, podcast, as well as participating in this discussion on the podcast, on Daniel Prince's podcast, Once Bitten, participating along with Giacomo Tsuko and Leo half as well. Those are two other people you should probably follow on Twitter if you're interested in following this whole debate at Giacomo Tsuko and uh, also following Luke Dasher, who is a longtime Bitcoin core dev and the creator of Bitcoin Knots and the co-founder of Ocean. So those are all names to follow. These are very long podcasts, but they're quite interesting. I've drawn on them quite a bit in the last few videos. And so if you want to wade into this, you've got about, uh, call it six or seven hours of listening, but it's quite interesting. And this is a topic I'm going to continue to try to cover. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.